everyone, in today's video I want to talk about 3D printing, about where we are in terms of scale, and I want to cover both the plant-based and the cultivated meat side. So we have a company based in Europe, Revo Foods, and they're working on 3D printing technology initially for fish products to get the texture right. They're working primarily on plant-based products right now. They've launched already in Europe and they've had some great successes there. It's a product that uses microprotein and soy protein to make their salmon. And then we have Umami Bioworks who's working in collaboration with Stakeholder Foods with their 3D printing technology. They've recently announced their eel product that they printed. Previously they had a fish Gruber product. We're gonna check out where they are in terms of scale. Now, Robo Foods, they are currently fundraising. If you're based in Europe and you're into the crowdfunding um, fundraising, you like to participate in that. I have a link in the description for how you can get involved. So we'll just check out a quick video of what they're doing and then we'll get into the Stakeholder Foods and Umami Bioworks partnership. We started in 2021 in Vienna and only one year later our first products were already at over 1000 locations in European supermarkets. In two years we generated over 1.3 million euros in revenues and in 2022 we became market leader for fish alternatives in Austria. We have already raised more than 7 million euros in capital. And for every euro from private investors, we received two additional euros from public funding. Our goal is to increase our production to 60 tons per month by 2025, to be able to generate a monthly revenue of 1.2 million euros. The market grows in double digits every year. The demand is exceeding our production capacity. So now is the ideal time for the next step in upscaling. Starting from just 100 euro, you can become part of this project to try to protect the ocean ecosystems. How scalable is Umami Bioworks? Stakeholder Foods has done their 3D printed eel with plant-based products, but eventually they do want to use cell culture as well to get more of that real meat in there. So this is the CEO of Umami Bioworks. My customers are the biggest seafood companies in the world. And if I can't talk to them about millions of pounds of product, it's not a relevant conversation for them. So with Stakeholder Foods, our partnership has been geared towards that, creating that scale, making a lot of product. The 3D printing approach we're working on with Stakeholder Foods right now is basically printing products that are ready to cook. So there's no kind of maturation incubation phase where the animal cells and other materials are printed and then go through a maturation phase to form the tissues. Like you've probably seen with their steaks, they would have 3D printed the steaks and then those steaks actually had to then grow because they were quite thin and the steak would essentially grow from the 3D printed shape to get a bit larger and get to really a size that you'd want to eat. With the Mommy Bioworks approach to their fish, it's basically micro extrusion. We can print a couple hundred kilos per hour, but we need to get to multiple tons per hour if we're making something like a white fish fillet and from what we've seen, stakeholder foods is very close to that. Of course, 3D printing is only one approach. Different technologies will be needed for different applications. If you're going to try and make tuna, which is a very fibrous, firm kind of fish, that's going to require a different approach to a flaky fish. The other issue is how well the fish responds to freezing and thawing versus a high-grade, never-frozen product going into a high-end restaurant like an eel, for example, or like a bluefin tuna, these higher end fishes. So we're exploring a couple different approaches with companies that are experts in food forming technology. Rebel Foods, with their next investment, they're hoping to get to 60 tons per month. With stakeholder foods, they're saying they'll be able to do a couple tons per hour. If they multiply that by, let's say, they have a 12 hour production cycle and they run for 30 days a month for a 12 hour production cycle, that gives us 720 tons per month. That's where we are with the 3D printing technology. Thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.